As Jay mentioned, uh, I'm going to spend the next uh, 10 to 15 minutes or so talking about uh, contextual computing and, and augmented reality and, uh, and why that's uh, a really important mix to focus in on from the point of view of both societal and, and industrial issues uh, uh, related to workforce development and, uh, and Im improved workforce capabilities, uh, not only in the developed world, but across the globe. Start with a big number, 300 million. That's currently the number of youth that are either underemployed, unemployed, or not in educational programs around the world. Right? Youth looking for opportunities, youth not having opportunities. Another big number is 45%. That's the number of adult age, working age population that's economically utilized, again, around the globe. Huge numbers of unproductive capacity that we need to tap into that, again, want to be productive but can't be productive for whatever societal and local regions are, are, are effect, affecting that. Historically, the approach to solving that problem has been training. More training, better training, more classrooms, uh, more just-in-time uh, field-based training, all of that kind of thing. But what we find is that education spending just generally, whether it's in the developed world or in the developing world, is not creating the capacity to get people out into the workforce at the numbers that are required. Other solutions are required to do this, and this is where technology-enabled solutions can provide a very important role in helping people get into the workforce and be expanding their capabilities across the world. So in addition to the societal issues, you've got real industrial pain that happens every single day. Starting from the left side, over 50% of an industrial workers' day, often a field workers' day, is spent looking for information, waiting for information, searching for information, unproductive time that could be better utilized. As you move up, even once they have all of the information available to them, 25% of the time they're still getting the job done wrong. Whether that's incorrectly positioning tracks for Amtrak, or whether that is a catastrophic failure on the oil and gas environment. At the same time, the cost of field-based maintenance, once you get it, is, is, uh, it represents over 70% of the cost of an asset that's deployed, whether that's utilities, whether that's aerospace and defense, whether that's an engine, the numbers are roughly the same. The cost of maintaining systems in the field is extremely high, and a large part of that cost is directly related to um, the human's role in that process. On top of all of that, there's just raw safety incidents. Imagine over, a sing, over, a, over, over one major safety incident a day, and that's a really conservative number, causing either death or catastrophic harm. Right? All things that can be solved by people having more information, not be solved completely, but uh, heavily impacted by people having more information, the right information available to them where they need it. Yeah. So in addition to not having the right information, we just don't have enough people in the workforce. So take, compare this number, that there's currently a 45 million skilled worker shortage. At the same time, we've got 300 million youth <coughs> un unemployed or undereducated and, un and, and not in the workforce. Right? A huge disconnect here that we need to find ways to fix as a society, both locally and globally. How is it currently addressed? How is that issue of workforce problems, workforce inefficiencies, how is that currently addressed? In general, it's addressed a lot by this bottom left corner, automated planning. Let's do a lot of analytics. Let's do a lot of machine learning to improve our operational processes. It's also uh, a lot of energy focused on the, the, the block in the upper left. Make our machines smarter so we don't need humans. Make them self-optimizing, self-running, self-controlling, uh, improve their efficiency so that, they, they, so that we can take the, the human factor out of the loop. And then down to the bottom right, it's improve our command and control processes across the, across the organization so we get more people in the right places. None of those ex existing strategies actually focus on improving the role and the functionality of the person who's actually out in the field, who's actually doing the job, turning a wrench, adjusting a piece of equipment using his insights or her insights to maintain systems. That's where that top right corner is. That's augmenting the human with information just in time in the right way delivered to them contextually in the world that they operate. 
the humans at the edge are, from our point of view, where warm hands can touch cold steel, where people fix, maintain, and operate and inspect complex systems in the aerospace, defense, energy, uh, utilities, and smart cities environments. And they're highly underrated. Tremendous capabilities, tremendous insights, wanting to get the job done well, wanting to get the job done safely, but not having the tools in many cases to be able to do that. I think we have an opportunity, all of us and each of us in this room who are focused on this industry, to help solve this problem. And that's what Context Era is really focused on as well. Because that's part of the whole strategy from an organizational perspective of integrated operations. Integrated operations is really focused on taking data, whether it's from systems, from the center, from the edge, and moving it up to make people more effective in their execution and their decision-making processes. We can drive that with the next technology-enabled workforce. The augmented worker that we often talk about in this room is heavily oriented around visual techniques. What can I provide that person with on, uh, on, uh, on headwear or other types of visual cues to provide them with more information? Extremely important, but I think there's other elements to that when you look at the complete augmented worker. We have auditory cues that we can provide, and we can also provide haptics and touch cues for a variety of applications, including direction finding and, uh, and, and safety warnings and things like that. Together, that augmented worker provides the ability as you know quite well for most of you in this room, to deliver the right information in the right way. So deliver it either on a head-worn device or on a wearable or on a tablet. Give them the right information that they need on the right device. But that's where we've been heavily focused. We have not been focused on the next step, to some extent the more important step, which is give them the right information at that moment in time that they need, right? Truly the contextual information that they need at the edge to do their job. From our point of view, this is where machine learning comes in. Machine learning and edge-based contextual computing allows us to look at the data that's available to a user, look at the individual's performance over time, look at the equipment performance and the organizational performance over time, and figure out what is the right piece of information that's important at this moment in time to provide constant adaptive contextual relevance in the information that's delivered regardless of the form factor in which it's delivered. So when you combine the two of machine learning and the augmented worker, what you actually have then is the ability to deliver the right information at the right time, but in the, at the right time specifically in that context. So if I'm a, a worker who is a novice, I get different kinds of instruction than if I'm a worker that has done this 100 times and they've demonstrated my, con my competency consistently over the last week or two weeks or months. Right? That information needs to be tailored to me based on what's happening and how I'm performing right now. This is what we're building at Context Air to solve this issue and address the problem and, and derive benefits for our customers. We're building an intelligent personal agent that delivers curated guidance and actionable insights to the last tactical mile, actually delivering the information in the right way, contextually appropriate to the, each individual user when warm hands touch gold steel, when they're out there touching equipment, maintaining, operating, inspecting complex systems. We're doing that using, as I say, a very human-centric approach to machine learning. So we're not, the data is important, yes, but it's the human that's the center of this problem. Who are you? What do you need? How are you feeling and performing today? What's in, what in, how does that actually affect you and your relevance? Okay. What we take is a combination of, in, of enterprise sources, everything from enterprise, uh, kind of the alphabet soup of enterprise data, ERP, PLM, blah, blah, blah. Combine that with live streaming data that might be available from sensors in the field, as well as your digital identity as a human. From that really, again, take a reductionist approach to the what's the right piece of data that you need to know right now. What is the now what? Who are you, where are you, now what? Okay. We deliver that information out onto a variety of form factors. We're heavily, uh, we're, we're primarily hardware agnostic, but we currently deliver that guidance onto wrist-worn devices, uh, uh, phone-based systems, and uh, and on on HoloLens for people that want more or need more immersive experiences and guidance in their in their environment. We're really excited to announce today a million-dollar contract to deploy these systems for Lockheed Martin to support their C-130 or their 130J aircraft and their maintenance teams around the globe. 
it's an extremely important opportunity to demonstrate where this actually delivers long-term value across multiple societies, across multiple workforces, and pulls that information back into the 130, see, the, the, the Hercules maintenance system to be able to constantly update and improve their maintenance processes. You can find us here. We'll be around for the next day or so. I uh, look forward to speaking to anybody who has any questions. Thank you very much. All right, Carl. Fantastic. And Craig, Cheers. congratulations on the, the milestone. Thank you, um, man. Good, good day to go and uh, announce that. So um, are there any questions for Carl? All right. So there you go. So, Carl, so how, how long do you go about creating a solution and how long does it typically take? So this is very actually, it's a very apropos that I follow uh, Vivek's talk because it's very much a, a solution oriented process. This isn't a sales process. This is about working with the customer to understand where their actual pain points are, targeting short term pilots that actually focus on those pain points and, uh, and then deliver ROI associated with those short term pilots. From there, then we build out and expand. Obviously, if you try to boil the whole ocean, say I'm integrating to every one of your enterprise systems systems tomorrow, good luck, that'll fail. So I think if you take a bite-sized approach and build it out over time, those are the successes that we have, which is a very similar kind of customer-oriented solution, uh, solution-based model, um, similar to what Vivex had. Great. Yep. So any other questions for Carl? Yeah. All right. All right. Fantastic. Thank you very Carl, much. Thanks again.